Hi, everybody. It's Nick Appleyard, as I said, CEO of TriStar Gold. Um, we'll keep this fairly, fairly short and brief today. We'll just hit some high points um, because we, you know, we've got some, some good stuff going on right now and um, we're in an exciting time. Full we'll disclaimer, board of directors, as everyone says, experience management's important and um, we've got an evolving board. We've got a new board member, Rob McKean. We've had a little changeover recently. Gets us a little more up to date, but it's still a good board. Capital structure for TriStar, just a bit of a background on it. First, obviously, we've got a single gold project, Central Brazil. Um, this is the capital structure right now. We've got about $6.5 million in the bank. We have another 1.5 US coming from Royal Gold in the end of March. Um, it says share price of 27, but I believe after today's correction, while well, we ramped to 37, we're back at 32, 33 now. So share price has been doing pretty well. Um, and we have a you know, market cap of around, well, it's around $60 million right now. So the company's been doing really well. And part of that's all based on the fact we've got um, a really good breakdown of shareholders, some really strong institutions, US Global, Gold 2000, RBC. I actually had the honor of taking US Global to site last week, showing them around. And they own 20% of us, so it's a big hold. They're a big, important shareholder for us, and it's a, a big holding for them. But also importantly, it's my presentation's got a bit weird there. Um, insiders and associates are about a quarter. It's roughly 38% the institutions and 35% retail is what that's supposed to say. A little bit of analyst coverage from Don Blythe at Paradigm as well. <coughs> so just on the project, so we have the projects called Castelo de Sonhos or Castle of Dreams. It's a gold project in central Brazil. It's a Paleo Plaza. Um, some people are very, very familiar with Paleoplasas, others less so. I think the thing to remember about Paleoplasas is there's not many of them around the world, and when you find them, they're generally really big. You know, I mean, obviously, Whitwater's Rand is massive. This is not a Whitwater's Rand look -like, look-alike. Um, it's a lot younger. It is very similar to Tarqua and to Jacobina, which are both producing highly profitable mines um, that we've learned a lot from, and uh, hopefully now we're starting to feed some information back to, actually. But the other thing that's really nice about our project, we're in a fairly remote part of Brazil, but we have all the infrastructure we need. We have a highway going by us, we have power lines going by us, we have water, we have a labor force, uh, we have no national parks, no indigenous populations close to us, previously disturbed country. So you've got this fairly newly discovered gold deposit. I, I like the, um, one of the slides on the previous presentation which showed the depth of the deposits as they get deeper. This one has effectively been discovered in the last sort of, and understood in the last five years. So we have 19 kilometers of gold bearing conglomerates breaking surface. So it is really the low hanging fruit right now. I mean, if you think of Tarqua, I think it's produced something like 25 million ounces of gold over its life. And it's still got 10, 15 million ounces of reserves at least. You know, our geology is very, very similar. And, you know, we're just starting out on the life of this one. <clears throat> so we have a very simple mine. Not one grain of sulphide have I seen on site. So it's just, it's fresh rock. It's not oxidized. It's just fresh rock. There just is no sulphide in it. So very simple metallurgy, close to infrastructure, and good scale. It's, you know, we're, we've got, you know, resources now. Working on reserves we have later this year. But the thing is big, and I'll get onto that in a second. So I took over the company about four years ago. When I took it over, there was a couple hundred thousand ounces of resources on the project. We've got that up to uh, 1.3 million ounces inferred, 700,000 ounces of indicated, and, and we figured that was enough to stop and do a PEA. So a year ago now, a little touch over a year ago, we published this PEA. As you can see, at 12.50 gold, sensational economics, you know, post-tax, 43% IRR. And a lot of that's just to do with, as I said, it's shallow, it's breaking surface, you've got access to the ore, you've got the low hanging fruit, you've got the high margin stuff to go through, very high metallurgical recoveries. Um, you know, so it's, this study you know, has laid the way for the future of this company. Off the back of this, we, we approached Royal Gold, we had to finance the next stage of the company, so Royal Gold bought a 1.5% NSR royalty for $8 million US. Um, and for ex the specific purpose of taking this study, moving it through to a feasibility study. 
Now, the, one of the interesting parts on this PEA and, and the feasibility study, which is now funded by Royal Gold, if you can look up in the top left-hand corner, you can see the sort of the, it's actually the rim of the plateau. That is sort of showing the 19 kilometers of outcrop. The little pull-out box, that's where the study is. It's just on one corner. So this project has a lot more scale, a lot more size to it, because everywhere we can see yellows and reds, that's where we have gold-bearing conglomerates coming to surface. But it's just what we call Esperanza South. This is the area we're doing the study on because we want to move it forward towards production, um, as do Royal Gold. So we've started a feasibility study now. We're doing 20,000 metres of RC drilling. Um, I think we're about 15,000 metres into it. Um, the idea being, as I said, we're at 1.3 million ounces of inferred, 700,000 ounces of indicated. Basically, you want to flip that around, get up to around one, you know, target 1.3, 1.4 million ounces of indicated, uh, leaving the remainder in inferred. Uh, we've got CSA Global on the, on, the, on, the, on the team here, as well as Pito and Associates doing hydrology, geotech, and tailings, which are obviously uh, a big issue in Brazil these days. But you know, we're lucky we've got very clean tailings, and uh, we've got a few you know, multiple locations we can use. And so we're looking at all the options available there. And you know, nice as, as for a junior as well, this study, as I said, is now fully funded. So we've got everything paid for all through the end of the year to complete this study in Q4. So as I said, that's part of the story. Um, as I said, just this part here, Esperanza South is where we're doing the study. I see my job as chief storyteller or CEO that we've got to make sure that people don't think that's the whole project because it's not. It's only a part of it. This was all one big alluvial fan and we're just looking at one corner of it in this study. So we've partnered with Goldspot Discoveries in December to effectively evaluate the whole alluvial fan. How much gold is there here? Where are the other targets? Where's the best place to target them? So that work is going, and, and for those who may not be familiar with Goldspot Discoveries, these are the guys who come in, use the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, integrate all of your data, and, and to tell the truth, it's really impressive what they can do. So their idea is to look, obviously, a long strike at the other areas, down deep, um, what we see as the, the big target is what we call CDS deeps. We know that Castello de Sonios is effectively floating on a younger granite, and where that granite cuts into the conglomerates, remobilizes the gold, reconcentrates it, and that's what we're targeting, you know, because we've got something like seven or eight kilometers along the base there where that conglomerate has been cut by granite, and the gold's gone somewhere. So we, that, that's, our, that's our big target. But I just want to touch on what Goldspot are doing. Um, I know we see a fair bit in the news about artificial intelligence and machine learning and what it's doing. And, and I haven't got a proper slide on it, but I'm just going to jump back um, to my opening slide. What we're doing when we're drilling our RC, we're doing reverse circulation drilling with an optical televiewer image. And that's what this is here in the, in the front slide. What we're seeing from Goldspot Discoveries is they can pull out so much information from those optical televiewer images. The, the images we get are crystal clear, they're high definition images, but the, the quality, the data they get out of that, the qual uh, and the consistency. So, I mean, everyone who's worked with geologists know you get two geologists, you're gonna get three different views. You get one machine, you're gonna get a consistent view across your whole ore body. Um, but it's obviously checked by geos, and, and what I really like about it is the artificial intelligence is pulling stuff out of our optical televiewers which we then showed to the geologists, they go, oh, yeah, well, that's obvious, that's this, you know, and but it wasn't obvious before the computer showed it to us, and, and that's what I see this. I mean, there's no magic to it, it just looks at more data at the same time than a human being can do. But, you know, I mean, they've worked, I know, with geophysics and, and, and geochem with other projects, but with this optical televiewer, it really, really plays into the hands of that artificial intelligence work. Um, so, I'm, yeah, we're expecting quite good things, but it's this optical televiewer image. And uh, just as a little side note on the OTV stuff, I think this has made this project. I mean, the project, you, you, you probably saw our stock chart. We've, you know, over doubled this year in price and the volumes we've been trading, really nice volumes, because this project is really moving nicely now. But it's because of this technology, the OTV. So anyone drilling, you know, should think about it because... We're drilling for less than half the price of diamond drilling, and we're getting a lot more information than people get from core. So, you know, just a little side note, but that stuff works really well. So, anyway, so we're doing this. Um, we're expecting the exploration targets to be 
completed by mid-year. We've got RC rigs on site waiting for that work so we can go and start looking at those targets, testing them straight away. Um, with the aim being, at the end of this year, we've got the pre-feasibility study complete, so we'll, have, we'll be issuing reserves for the first time, you know, more formal economics than we've had through the PEA, but we'll also have a lot more visibility on the rest of the project, you know, because I really want to make sure when I get to sit in front of people and talk about the pre-feasibility study, and it's going to be around a million ounces, because that's what we've got just in that corner, down to 100 metres, that I can say, yeah, we've got a million ounces there, but we've got X million ounces, in, you know, visible in the rest of the project, because that's really what we think we've got here. Just on that note, this slide just shows the last couple of years, you know, how we've grown, you know. I mean, 2014, a couple of hundred thousand ounces just from effectively drilling under a few informal mining pits or Garampera pits. 2017, we'd got it to 1.3 million ounces. 2018, 1.3 million plus another 700,000 indicated. So we're not allowed to add them together, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, so there's just a lot more there. I mean, we know that it's one system. These aren't separate ore bodies. It's just one continual system. <sighs> a big thing for me, obviously, is um, infrastructure. You know, you can't build a mine if you can't get power to it. You haven't got water. You haven't got a labor force. We hear this a lot. There's the project again. Up the left-hand side of that satellite imagery is BR-163. It's the main highway. It goes up through Para State. It's also the main conduit for power lines going up the state. Bottom left-hand corner is the village of Castello de Sonia, so about 10,000 people, nice labor force. Everyone in that village is a farmer, a logger, or a miner. They're people who would be very familiar with mining. We're about an eight to 10 hour drive from the closest commercial airfield. We have our own little airstrip on site, and if people haven't seen a conglomerate-based hosted ore body, that's what it looks like as it sticks out of the ground right next to our camp. So this is a project, it's simple, it's scalable, and it's moving forward right now. It's really, it's in the exciting growth phase. So. And that's it, it's a really simple story.